understanding enterprise momentum is not a straightforward task. It depends on various schools of thought and in particular the breadth and the depth of an organizational dynamics and elements which constitute the overall ecosystem is the way momentum is created, maintained or even perhaps uh, lost. Inertia on the other hand is the negative consequential results of an organization losing its heartbeat and finding itself in severe difficulties and thereby having to take drastic action in terms of restructuring or revamping its value chain and many instances even uh, rebranding uh, itself. Is it therefore possible to suggest that the momentum of an organization is what puts it into perpetual motion and a motion that is sustainable and one that continues consistently and with the same predictability without any external interference. Is it also possible to suggest that a momentum created is one that could be depended on for future changes and future ambitious plans? Has the momentum created got to be fed with new ideas, initiatives and innovative thinking so that the level of motion continues to be at the standard expected? Is inertia driven by external factors or could it be possible that internal stagnation rigidity and lack of innovativeness can interfere with the momentum created. One of the useful consideration which perhaps hampers the sustainability of organizational momentum is the frequent turnover in top leadership and how this impacts on creating what is referred to as organization toxicity. A toxic work environment is very often a consequence of trivial managerial changes and a frequent replacement of top executives, which impacts negatively in terms of making the organization frequently and constantly in flux disrupting its functioning and smooth uh, productive orientation and impacts negatively on morale, overall concentration and the motivation to deliver value to the end customer. It cannot therefore be underestimated that success is achieved by making the organization tick like a clock and generating the harmonious, synchronized and seamless arrangements that keep the flow of positive activity going and ensures consistency and predictability of uh, performance outcomes. In most cases, organizations and particularly boards of directors take the view that bringing new uh, leadership thinking is about bringing freshness and a new impetus uh, for kick-starting the momentum lost and delivering better financial results. This mindset is extremely pervasive and as figure one illustrates between the period of 2011 to 2015 CEO turnover has increased exponentially and 
like a copycat practice. Most industry sectors have started to plan termination of their current CEOs and bring in alternatives in order to boost performance standards. This practice, which is as reported by several studies, is more harmful to an organization's momentum as opposed to bringing in the expected benefits has been at the heart of several studies which have concluded that in most cases firing a CEO does not necessarily pay off. It brings in very little or nothing at all to demonstrate that there are big positive changes or whether the lost momentum has been regained. Uh, Professor Wierzema has conducted a large study related to CO turnover in the 500 largest public companies in the USA during the period 1997 to 1998. The result of the study concluded by indicating that there is very little improvement in the organization's concerned financial performance as a result of hiring and replacing their existing CEOs. So what was the result of all this turnover? Not much as it turns out. I analyzed the financial performance of companies that had fired their CEOs in three ways. First, I compared company performance in the two years prior to CEO dismissal with performance two years after. Second, I compared performance with industry averages for the same period. Finally, I compared the performance of companies that had fired their CEOs with the performance of those whose CEOs had retired. I found that companies with CEO dismissals experienced no significant improvement in their operating earnings or their stock performance. Operating earnings, earnings before interest and taxes as a percentage of total assets averaged 11.2% before dismissal and 11.8% after dismissal. Not a statistically significant difference. Return on assets averaged 2.6% before dismissal and 2.4% after, again not statistically significant. Company performance relative to industry average also failed to improve significantly after bringing in a new CEO and performance lagged behind that of companies with routine CEO successions. I could not find a single measure suggesting that CEO dismissals have a positive effect on corporate performance. It is true, therefore, to recognize that boards of directors have developed the knack for passing the buck of perhaps their own failures by blaming their CEOs when performance sags. They succumb to investment pressure and fire the CEO for demonstrating diligence, concern and proactive governance. Short-termism, on the other hand, is perhaps the main killer for organizational momentum and the obsession with generating quick gains in earnings or stock price returns is an obsession amongst all public listed companies. Figure 3 illustrates the sharp difference between organizations that resort to frequent changes and high turnover of their CEOs in comparison with organizations that have proper succession plans and maintain the smoother placement by keeping an eye on the momentum generated and thereby continuing the journey 
with sustainability in mind. There are, however, legitimate reasons for firing CEOs in order to regain momentum and keeping an organization uh, on track for its long-term sustainability. As figure four uh, illustrates, some of the reasons as found by Murphy as a result of a study based on interviews of 1,087 board members from 286 organizations that have terminated or forced out their CEOs. It was found that most of the CEOs are not fired because of poor financial performance, but rather because as what has been referred to as soft issues. 31% of the CEOs got fired because of rigidity and not introducing change at the right time and in the right way. 28% for not taking the voice of the customer seriously. 27% for tolerating low performance. 23% for denying reality and 22% for too much talk and not enough action. In a sense, the study reported by Murphy focuses more on competence of CEO as opposed to outcomes of financial performance. As he concludes, it is possible for a CEO to mangle a change management initiative by making one stupid mistake after another. But it is more often the case that the CEO isn't dumb, but rather their leadership styles are just inappropriate for their particular culture. Maybe a new CEO's leadership style is highly directive and competitive, but their corporate culture is very creative and collaborative. Or maybe a CEO enters a turnaround situation with a style that emphasizes brainstorming when formality and clear direction would be more helpful. What can be derived from these various studies is that leadership has to be at the helm and momentum generated and maintained is the sole responsibility of leaders. The appointment of leaders rather the onset has to be for the purpose of creating momentum and continuing the existing momentum with sustainability in mind. Unfortunately, the obsession with outcomes means that the language on momentum does not get referred to and leaders' executive performance is on financial results and not on investing significantly in preserving the health of an organization and sustaining its path for continuity and perhaps prosperity. It therefore leads to the wrong appointments in many cases and throwing the baby with the bathwater.